Hey guys, what is up? Ioki here, bringing you some more support coaching. If this is your first time on the channel and you don't know who I am, I am a multi-season, a high elo support player. I play every single champion in the role, including a lot of off-meta stuff, which we are going to be looking at a off-meta pick today. Um, I also have a lot of competitive experience in Twitch Rivals and other high elo uh, tournaments. So, you know, if you uh, like this type of edu educational content, make sure you guys are subscribed to the YouTube channel. That being said, today we are going to be coaching my boy, aka Amazing. And by the way, this is this has nothing to do with the coaching. This is just a weird coincidence. Malevolent Loki, Loki the guy you're playing against... That guy goes to my stream. I 100% know this is an Aoki viewer. So this we, we have pitted Aoki viewer versus Aoki viewer. Let's see who carries harder. Uh, okay, so before we get into the game, I want to talk about your champion pick and rune pick. So we got Poppy support. Uh, you mentioned in the email where we scheduled the coaching that this is kind of your backup pick. Um... It is actually really, really good this game because you're against a tank support, and it's super, super good against uh, mobility. So uh, Poppy is kind of like a counter pick against champions like Leona and Alistar. I really would not be having this like as your backup pick if your primary Senna gets banned. Um, I would really be like using this as more of like a pocket pick. Now, if you absolutely just love Poppy and just want to become the best Poppy support player ever, absolutely, go ahead. But I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, the strengths of the champion relies in letting them lock in a Leona or Alistar and then locking in Poppy, which luckily, this game, they did lock in Alistar. Um, and also, uh, looking at your runes, it looks like you take Domination Secondary every single game. I would probably um, go into the Inspiration Tree for your Secondary runes for Poppy. You know, uh, Biscuits or Cosmic Insight. Inspiration, inspiration is such like a good plug it plug and play type of rune page for a Secondary page. It's just like, you can't really go wrong. Like, Biscuits are always useful whether you're winning lane or losing lane uh cosmic insight you know having lower uh summoner cooldowns on a champion like poppy who's pretty reliant on her flash to like land flash suns and stuff like that is always super good all right so i always start my coaching sessions with did you get out of the base were you the first one out of the base are you being a proactive player because so much of solo queue is just being proactive you know a lot of players just like queue up they leave the fountain late, um, you know, oh, oh no, my jungle's losing, uh, my top's losing, I guess I guess I lose. And they just, like, kind of take it. Like, they, they aren't the ones that are going out there and, like, making things happen. So I love to see that you're kind of, like, leading the charge out of the Nexus. Let's see, let's see where this goes, guys. Now, ideally, what happens is you come out here and you get some vision on uh, either red buff or right here if you're not feeling as risky. Like, you do have four people boss side, so I highly doubt that they're, like, actually five-man stacked in this bush, but it's possible. So, uh, what I would be doing here is I'd be getting, dropping a ward here, recalling, and leaving the base with the red sweeper. Because so much of the tank v. tank matchup in the bot lane is just who has uh, bush control, right? Because... Let's say you have a ward in this bush and you see the Alistar. Alistar is useless if you can see him, right? You know exactly how much you need to respect Alistar. You can't walk into, like, his WQ radius. But if he swept this bush and, like, the way pushes up and then, like, you don't know if he's in this bush or this bush or roaming, like, denial of vision is so... It's just as important as vision itself. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's see how this level one actually plays out. Okay, we see... <laughs> Ioki viewer spotted... Okay, so let's take in all the information that we have. We know where two enemy champions are, and we know where obviously all five of our champions are. So now the worst case scenario, which is a concept that I harp on a lot in my coaching sessions, you always want to train yourself to be having that worst case scenario in the back of your head, because once you do, once you understand the worst case scenario, it changes all of your actions. So now the worst case scenario has gone from five people in this bush to three people in this bush. So at worst, it's a 4v5. And, you know, we're playing in silver, so it's probably they're not like an LCS like, you know, caliber team. They're, they're not all going to be on the same page. This low elo solo key, right? So we can take advantage of that. So is, uh, okay, it looks like that's your ward. This is a really bad ward. All this does is like give you temporary vision of a champion that you already knew. Uh, whereas like if you put a bush uh, a ward here, you can sometimes see if the enemy jungle is um, crossing the river to do an invade or, you know, going for a gank and stuff like that. This ward is pretty worthless. It literally only is going to give you like that temporary comfort vision of, yeah, I definitely did see Jax here. Uh, so always be look, getting the ward in here, or if your team walks you in, get the ward on the red. That's an even more valuable one. Okay, so now the worst case scenario has once again changed, and I would say it is 100% in your favor. So worst case scenario, Seraphine Jacks over here, Alistar and uh, Kale and Kaisa are in here. 
you have four people. It's 4v3 at absolute worst. So I really hope we go for something here. Okay, Alistar gets a Glacial. Looks like we're probably just going to get a free kill. Okay. Nice. Actually, really good spell discipline. You saw that uh, Gangplank used his Ignite, and you guys didn't stack Ignites. Very nice. Uh, realistically, what you should be doing is recalling right now, using the gold that you got from your assist, and swapping out your trinket. If, if you watch my high elo games, you see that I pretty much get the ward down, go back, swap for trinket every single time that I'm playing like uh, like a like a champion like Poppy. Now, if I'm playing like a Janna or like an Enchanter or something that kind of needs needs to hold on to their yellow trinket to keep themselves from getting ganked, uh, that's fine. But this is just kind of wasting time. Kane obviously doesn't want to start their red. Okay, so Jax is inting. I mean, th th this is just a freebie. This is not necessarily anything that you guys are doing well. It's just, I mean, it's just a freebie. It does look like you're pretty comfortable on the champion, though. That that uh, that flash E was pretty, pretty instant. So it's good to see that you are playing champions that you're comfortable with. Big part of solo queue. All right, so analysis, Kowalski. Alistar's flash is down. Uh, we've got Jax's flash is down, but. Your flash is down as well. So we're, we're, we're coming into lane equally with the uh, equal summoners down. Let's see how this lane goes. All right. So, I mean, obviously, Alistar and, and Kaisa got to the wave before you guys because you were late to the wave because you went over here. This isn't like necessarily bad that you guys went and got that kill. Um, I, I can tell you that like you're not going to get that same result every single time. So like... Missing missing minions in, in a matchup that is very dependent on like who gets level two first is probably not the best. Um, you guys did get the good result. You guys did get Jax. It, that's fine that you guys missed a little bit of XP, but you need to play accordingly, right? Like we see that she's level two. We saw that he's level two. So why why like why are we walking ahead of our minions and stacking against a wall for an Alistar level two combo? This is the, and and then we're doubling down on this. Actually, that's that, that's actually not bad that you pressed E because it procs your aftershock. That's fine. But yeah, definitely don't like walk ahead of your minions. It's okay. Like like look at this menu. Like they're going to shove this into you. This is going to touch your turret. You don't actually need to be uh like freaking out and like contesting every single XP. Actually, Jinx looks like she shoved it back. Regardless, the sentiment stands that like if you if you're just patient, you're going to get the XP that you need. Like, all right. So a lot of l l let me explain a little bit about like, the Alistar uh, matchup in terms of versus Poppy. L l let me first explain the Alistar versus Leona matchup. It's a very very boring matchup. Uh, basically, whoever uses their combo first uh, loses. So if Leona engages on, like, let's say you're playing Leona, you engage on Kaisa, Alistar counter engages onto Jinx, and then you guys lose that. If Alistar engages on the Jinx and you successfully counter engage onto the Kaisa, you guys win that. It's very, very boring uh, because it basically just turns into a stalemate of like holding on to your uh, abilities until like a gank or like someone's severely out, out of position or something. Um, and it's going to work pretty similarly with the Poppy. Now, what I want to see is, Al I'm sure at some point, Alistar is going to catch your Jinx. Now, what I want to see is you counter-engaging onto the enemy ADC. You want to, like, because once Alistar has WQ'd onto Jinx, he's used everything, right? His, he, you know, he's going to auto-attack you a little bit. It's going to do nothing. But if you go onto the Alistar, and I don't know if you're going to, we'll, we'll see how well you play it. If you go onto the Alistar, that literally gives no reason for Kaisa to walk up and use everything on Jinx. Whereas if you counter engage onto the uh, Kaisa, she can't use everything on Jinx, right? She has to deal with you. So we'll see. We'll see. And then there, there's a little more in play. Once again, you are just 100% disrespecting that you guys are at a severe XP disadvantage. Like Alistar could literally just like Q, U, and W backwards, but he's going for the uh, Jinx engage instead. So let's see what we do. We have two options, right? We shouldn't be in this scenario. We should 100% just be playing safely because we're at an XP deficit. But we're in the scenario now, so let's see what we do. It doesn't look like you're making the right call here. Yeah. 
So we're going on to Alistar, who has already used everything. He's already used everything. Why, why, why are we going on to Alistar? Do you see what this allows Kaisith to do? It's literally... It, it, if you put yourself in between Kaisa and Jinx here... You probably win this trade, even though you're a level down. Yeah, push Kaisa away. Push Kaisa away, cure, maybe your auto attacker, and then walk back. Because do you see what's happening to Alistar? Alistar can't one-shot her, right? He's not the actual damage in the lane. But the second he he goes on to her, all of our minions start aggroing, aggroing him. So once the CC on Jinx has, uh, you know, let off, has ran out, Jinx is going to just start auto-attacking Alistar, and he's going to lose this trade, even without you using any abilities on him. So, that, that you see, there seems to be, like, a pretty fundamental misunderstanding of, like, what your role as a tank support is to do in the Alistar lane. But, again, this is... I, I can't stress how bad it is that we're even taking these trades and not just, like, playing safe until we're, like, equal in uh, uh, XP. Okay, once again, we're going for the Alistar, man! Go for the Kai'Sa! This is the actual... This is the actual threat. This is the real threat. Also, we're going way too deep because, like, our Jinx is ignited, ignited. She has to path backwards. And now, look... We're taking minion aggro. We're taking 2v1 damage. Yeah, in a lot of lanes, ma like, making two bad uh, counter engages like that, that that's, that's a game over, bro. Alright, um, now typically, I would say that you should, yeah, buy boots. Good job, good job. Buy boots and walk straight mid, especially because we see, like, something for sure is going down on top side. However... Uh, because we've taken all these bad trades um, and and made so many like bad calls when we're at an XP deficit, now our Jinx has uh, 200 HP under her turret against an Alistar. Now, if this was an Enchanter, yeah, she can't get Dove. But this is an Alistar, so you actually do have to path bot here. But I want you to know, in most circumstances, you should be pathing like top side or mid side here. Poppy's a decent roamer, actually. But yeah, I, I, I think it is correct to come bot here because just because there's a massive freaking wave and Alstar 100% can't just like walk up and dive. Trade. It, it'd, be, it'd be a one for one. Alstar would, would for sure die, but. All right, we uh, our, our Jinx needs to reset, bro. So what you need to do is you need to shove this. There you go. There you go. Cue it. Cue the wave. Cue the wave. You want to get this shove in as fast as possible. If you take a minion, oh well, she'll, she'll forgive you. I promise. Good job. Don't be afraid to use your abilities to shove the wave, though. A lot of a lot of the strength in a, a lot of like support champions is can they help manipulate the wave? Like that's one of the biggest weaknesses of Pike is that he can't help shove. He literally only has auto attacks. Um, it's one of the biggest strengths of like support Seraphine. She can double Q the wave, and it's like an instant push. I think a lot of low elo players have this fear that like uh, they shouldn't be touching the wave at all because they've been conditioned to think that way, but. I mean, if if you want to get to like medium high level play, a lot of a lot of the jungle and supports uh, responsibilities lie in making sure the wave is crashing, so that you can get good resets. All right, so I mean, this is free. Nice, this is free. Goodbye, malevolent Loki. Should have twitch primed, bro. Should have twitch primed. All right, nice. Successful mid gank into Dragon. Now, I know this isn't your ward because I know an Aoki viewer would never put a ward here instead of right in front of the Dragon where it sees the entire pit and outside of it. I I, I know that's not your ward. Like, it literally is not. But I just, want, I just want to harp on that again. Make sure you're putting the ward in front of the Dragon. All right, so let's see what we got here. We're kind of doing two different things at once. Now, what we should be doing... I'm going gonna, gonna to talk about what we should be doing and how you're playing what is actually happening. I think there's value in both. So what you should be doing is pulling off of the dragon and zoning these people from walking into the dragon. Um, very, very few instances do you actually need your DPS as a support on the dragon. A much more important thing you can be doing is like playing a bush and making sure a jungle doesn't come over here. But we know people are coming from the bot. So like just stand in front of this Alistar. Stand in front of this Alistar and auto attack him. Don't use any abilities or you can use your Q. But don't use anything that's going to like use your aftershock because you might need it. But yeah, like what this Jinx is doing is actually what you should be doing. Standing between 
you and the place that your the enemy wants to get to. We saw the exact same flaw in your play down here. Uh, you're not standing between Kaisa and Jinx. You're just like kind of going on whatever, whenever. Get that into your head that like that's part of the support role is you want to stand between what the enemy wants and the enemy. Now, sometimes that's the dragon. Sometimes that's the baron. Sometimes that's your ADC. But let's talk about how we actually play this. Very nice stun. Very nice. It's good. I, I like your positioning. This is actual frontlining. You're not like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm below half health. Oh no, oh no. Because you understand that if they use anything on you, that then they're not using it on Jinx. So I do like that forward play. Uh, again, you do seem very comfortable on the Poppy champion. So I'd like to see that. Nice, nice, nice. I mean, that right there is like the abs. That, that literally is why Poppy support is ever played. Is the fact that like as long as you have, you know, reflexes better than a 90 year old person, you can just W the Alistar combo and he can never play the game. But again, that's an extension of you standing between what the enemy wants and the enemy, right? So good stuff. Nice. Good job. All right, uh, we're in pretty dire need of resets here. Uh, they they have an AD advantage. They have, um, I mean, Alistar's got a cloth armor advantage. It's not massive, but they basically what I'm saying is that they are on tempo. They have spent their gold, and fighting them is really not a big, um, re really not a super attractive thing right now. So we can only be standing here if our W is up and we're confident in it but they're gonna shove this to us so again let's just wait it's the same thing like earlier we were at an xp deficit earlier so let's just be patient and they'll they'll push it to us um but now we're at like an item advantage item deficit item disadvantage that's what i meant also an xp deficit though all right so once again why aren't we just being patient they're, they're, they're literally doing exactly what we want them to do. They're pushing the wave into us. We can sit under turret and just, like, get free farm. But instead, we're risking our life. And if, like, Kaisa had positioned a little bit better and was ready for that, you would have died. And there's just no reason to, like, take this risk. No reason at all. Like, yes, you do. Te you technically could have W'd that, but you still don't win the trade. And, and it's like, what are you fighting for? Like, what are you contesting right here? There's nothing. Just, what, just wait. Just patience. Just wait... 10 15 seconds and and look the wave is literally right where you want it to be and you didn't have to risk your life all right so we go back what do we buy here what are we buying all right plated steel caps it's not Bad. It's really not that great of a buy this game, though, to be honest. I, I would probably be going for Merc Treads against this team. AP, 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 uh, stun, AP. I mean, Kale's kind of mixed, but... But it still caps isn't a bad buy. I, I think a slightly more efficient one probably would have been Merc Treads. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. We need to play this smart. We need to play this smart. We're not playing it smart. Okay, we're kind of like tipping our hand a little too fast here. If we had waited seven seconds for Gangplank to be in position, this Jax is almost certainly going to walk straight through here. Right? I highly doubt he's going to walk through our turret before the wave has crashed. I'm pretty sure he was pathing to go through here. And if we just wait in this bush, stun him on this wall, Gangplank gets a barrel combo, we can probably kill the Jax. We might still kill the Jax, but like, it's so much harder now. Yeah, we still kill the Jax. But yeah, just, just, just be a little bit patient. Um, timing is a big, big component in League of Legends. Uh, being aware of where your allies are. Uh, makes... Oh, ooh, we'll, we'll, we'll edit that out. We'll edit that out. No big deal. It's a fail flash. It happens to everybody. Except me. Never fail flash in my life, guys. All right, stopping their backs here is... Uh, stop, stopping their backs here is good. Now, remember, we're, we're still down a level. But it is really, really, really good that we stop their backs here. It puts them completely out of their mojo. They're obviously wanting to spend gold and go back. And we stop it. It's good. 
we probably let Jinx stop it because I feel like there's a world where you stopping it with your face goes wrong. Like Jinx can for sure just like zap here or something. And stop stop their back. But it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Very risky execution. Luckily, it looks like you guys get out of it. And now you guys have a little bit of a decent advantage. Once once again, man, you should you should a billion percent be on red sweeper by now. By this point of the game, ten minutes in, you gotta be on red sweep. Uh, you you don't need to leash blue for Jinx. You don't need to leash blue for Jinx. Be mid, hover here, get vision over here, do something that's not like you you. If you ever find yourself DPSing an objective, uh, as the support, you're probably doing something wrong. Like, look, she's literally like, she she's full health, man. Like, she's fine. She's fine. This is a really bad ward too. We already have the war, uh, pit control warded. And there's not going to be a dragon up for a while. And we have a control ward here. Definitely want to be dropping this ward a lot deeper. I think this was just like a, a brain off, you know, autopilot. I know I'm supposed to ward dragon because I've heard someone say that before. But like really consciously think about like the vision and the value that it's bringing to your team when you drop down a ward like that. Like, think how much more value this ward would be, or this ward, or maybe even this ward. Like, you, you know, you don't want to go too deep into their jungle because you uh, their bot lane is on reset. So if you happen to have, like, uh, stepped over a ward, which I don't think you have. You got pretty good control of the vision, or uh, control of the river. But if you stepped on a ward, like, their bot lane, remember, think back to that worst case scenario. Their bot lane and their jungle could be coming, like, straight here. So you probably don't want to go too much deeper. Like, I would be dropping the ward here, in this bush, or here. I mean, this, this is a good ward. Much better than this one. Alright, we're showing mid. I Why is Jinx taking jungle camps? Does anybody know? Oh, I, I was mistaken. There is a dragon coming up. But again, this ward is like worthless for it, right? This is a really good ward if there's a dragon coming up. Okay, okay. So we're pulling it top. Alistar just used his combo on uh, the dragon. So Alistar, completely worthless here. Completely worthless. I really genuinely would just assume that Kane can 1v1 the uh, Kai'Sa, or at least like, you know, it's going to be a stalemate or something. Play to your ADC here. Stand between this character and this character, getting to what they want, remember? You guys are at a massive advantage here. Alistar has already fumbled the bag. So you need to be frontlining for this champion and letting her like, you know, proc her lethal tempo and DPS. But this is a good catch. I mean, this is mostly just like Kai'Sa misplaying, right? I think in a more proper 5v5, this Kai'Sa would never just like chase Kane into his jungle and you should be positioning here. I do like that you didn't use your stun on the Alistar though. That that is good. That is good spell discipline. And this did actually end up being a very, very high value pick. So it's not like you played this like terribly, like execution wise. It's just fundamentally, you should understand that like you should be creating space for your jinx. That's a that's a big, big component of playing tank supports is creating space. Like just by existing as Poppy, they can't walk up and like path towards your jinx, right? Okay, now we now we play back to the objective. This is good. And hey, you're not DPSing the objective. Nice. I really want to be using your stun here either. Just just because it looks like they're giving it. But, you know, I probably want to be stunning the the scuttle crab unless it like has a shield that you need to pop. All right. Let's see what we're building. Bammy Cinder. Okay, that can't be right. Bammy Cinder. Let me let me think of what you're building with that. What you should be building is Locket. You should be rushing Locket. They have uh two champion three champions that are going to be zooming into very very close range. Uh yeah, L Locket is just really really good. Especially with the hyper carry like Jinx, just keeping her alive. So you picked up another uh, nice cheese skill mid. 
We're coming bot. Sorry, I was, I was I was focusing on. Okay, see, you walked mid, and like, yes, it is lucky that you you got the kill. So like, this is one of those things where it's like, fundamentally, you did something like I would say that is incorrect. Again, um, execution wise, I'm glad you got the kill, but I do think that this is another scenario where because you have such a fragile uh, ADC in the bot lane, and they do have a diving uh, support. I, I mean, Kais is basically a diver too. Like, she can follow up on like any CC. So, I, I would for sure be saying, like, this is one of the scenarios that you path bot here. And I know that's kind of funny because, like, I, I say in all my other coaching sessions, like, oh, you should be pathing mid. You should be pathing mid. And finally, I have like a coaching client that paths mid, but it's in like the two scenarios that he probably shouldn't be. So, once again, execution wise, you got the kill. Good job. You killed the Ayuki viewer. Um, fundamentally, I think you probably walk bot there and make sure, uh, protect Jinx from the dive. You definitely wait for Gangplank to be on the uh, the blast cone there. Now Gangplank has to walk around. It is smart of him though to wait for you to clear the ward. All right, here's the problem with like choosing a champion like Poppy over a champion like Leona. Poppy's really really good at counter engage and like counter picking. Uh, Alistar. But how do you actually engage onto this Kaisa? You know, you're getting the gank, it, unless she just like happens to walk up here and like lets you stun her against the wall. How do you actually get on top of her? I guess you can E and then alter, and that's like a decent amount of CC, but like it's nowhere near as like efficient as like a Leona would have been there. So again, if you just like Poppy, please keep playing Poppy. You 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 seem you seem actually good at her. We're gonna we're gonna smooth over some of these uh so, some of these fundamental errors we're making, but you do actually seem to like be excelling at this champion and I, I checked your win rate you got like a 55% win rate so you're still you're still climbing yeah see it's just like so hard to like make this engage now we're just like kind of walking around behind the turret oh this is a mess this is a mess I would honestly say now that we've already committed the gangplank ult we may as well try to make it work you know we, we know their jungler's top well you should know their jungler's top if you're looking at your mini map so you may as well just like full send, E, R, and just the tap R, not like the send them back to base R. Or maybe even like try diving the Alistar, although that's pretty risk. He's got his ulti running. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is suspect. The fact that like we're not playing a champion that can engage when they're out in the middle of the field like this, you probably just call this, uh, you probably just call this dive off. But now that, you know, once you're at the point in time when Gangplank is ulted, I would probably just full send. All right, got this shoved in. We're looking mid again. Uh, okay, so once again, timing, timing, timing is so important. We're about to show on mid, whereas if we just literally wait seven seconds, she's struggling to get this in, right? She is struggling. If we wait five seconds tops for Gangplank to be like right here, ready to combo, she wouldn't already be pathing away from this Gangplank, right? She wouldn't already be pathing away. So it's kind of like, it, it, you need to, you, there, there's so many, like, there's so many times that if you just show a slight amount of patience, this gank would have worked. 100% this would have worked. If you had just waited four seconds more. Like, Kane would have been in a better position. Gangplank would have gotten something off. Alright, so I mean, that, that was a, that's a good demonstration of that, like, Kaisa and Alistar are really good at diving together. That was just Kaisa misplaying, right? Did something happen mid? What happened mid here? Okay, so she gets the ulti off. Jax comes in and tries to 1v3, I guess. Ooh, nice flash, nice flash. Nice dodge on the Seraphine E2. Nice. Alright, we reset. Two, one, and five. All right. It looks like. Are we building Frostborn Gauntlet? Whatever you're building, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be that. It, it should definitely be Locket. All right. And then let's talk about this ward that you did right here. Because I want you to get into the 
mode where you're consciously thinking about what am I actually warding against? What what are you actually warding against right here? Is it the jacks being in this exact bush? Because we actually have vision of the river. And we just warded their bot try. So he can't come from here and he can't come from here. So are we literally just warding against Jax being in that bush at that exact second? I think you're just autopiling a lot of your wards. And I think if you, one, start thinking about the absolute worst case scenario and two, consciously be thinking about like the value and why you are warding in certain places, it's going to totally change the way you approach this game. Because it's, it's going to lead to you consciously thinking, Oh, that's that's a silly ward to put down right there because Jax can't be in this bush. Okay, but he could come from here. I should ward over there. And I wonder if he's topside. Like you'll you'll actually just like it's like a series of events that leads to you consciously being more map aware. So next time you put down a ward, literally think, why am I warding this? Even if it even if it just seems like a, a no-brainer ward, like your whole team is doing dragon and you put down a control ward on dragon, ask yourself. Why am I control warding dragon? Oh, because it controls space. Oh, and then they have to walk into here to contest the space. I should stand here. Like, do you see how it just like leads to, to point after point after point after point? And then it's going to improve your play. I promise you. And I know that because that's what I started doing to like get a more holistic view on the game. All right. So once again, what did we do? We, we, Used our CC on the person who has already used everything. Alistar has nothing left. Why are we stunning him? We know there's a very good chance that Kais is coming. She just W'd. So we, we wouldn't realistically know if her ulti is up or not. I mean, I, I guess you could probably know timing-wise since, since she used it back here. But you know Kais is coming. So why, why are we using anything? Remember, stand between what the enemy wants, which is right now your ADC, and the enemy. Don't let her get here. Imagine if you had a, a shove back there. All right, so we're, we're, we're both going to die here. It may take a while, but we're, I think we're going to die. Oh, we don't actually die. That's kind of funny. You should have died. In game. Don't cancel me, guys. Uh, all right. We are late to set up because we had a really stupid, set, uh, stupid fight in the bot lane. Looks like our team is actually ab absolutely just murdering them, though. Doesn't matter. Nice. We get, we're get we diving. We're frontlining. This is all fine, other than the fact that like we didn't get there when we should have. Always want to be at the dragon 40 seconds before the dragon. Gives you time to set up the vision. Gives you time to uh, wait for your teammates to rotate. You know, you can get vision behind the pit. Prep your waves. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of good stuff. All right. So, it looks like Yorick is smurfing it up. Top. Now, I think your Jinx is way too far out, but this isn't Jinx's coaching session. Honestly, I would not even be pathing bot here. All, all that pathing bot does is uh, encourage her to continue split pushing, which, like, Jinx is not a split pusher. I would be, one, spamping my Jinx that you need to come get this free tier 1 turret. Like, ADCs are the dedicated right clickers, right? This turret's super low. All you have to do is assist her and walk this wave in, and she autos this twice, and then you've got another turret. So I don't know why she's going for this. I would definitely be like encouraging her not to. But if she is, if this is the play that you guys are going for, what you need to be doing is setting up vision to let her do that. We need vision here, here, maybe here. You know, you need an early warning system so that Jinx can brainlessly walk down this lane. But again, I would be communicating with her that this is not the right play. Whether that's typing, whether that's pinglish, you know, ping and spam pinging them. Okay, Alistar missed his combo. I, I mean, this is just, this is just Fiesta. It's looking pretty good though. We can we're gonna get a stun off here, I think. Yeah, once again, I, I, I this is kind of just like uncoachable, because you guys shouldn't be in this scenario to begin with. You should be cracking open tier ones, and playing for the dragon. I mean, I mean, I mean, none of that really matters. All 
yeah, cracking tier one and, and dragon should 100% just be like what you're playing for there, not tier two. So there's a lot, of, a lot of stupid fiesta stuff, but I understand that in solo queue, it's not always, you know, you can't always control the fiesta. And then, so Jinx goes from splitting bot to splitting top. <laughs> All right, we're moving to assist Arcane. This is good. This is good. He played a little too fast there. Even if you got caught and died there, I wouldn't necessarily say that was your fault if because you're just rotating to a teammate. Man, Poppy does so much freaking damage. So yeah, we we went Frostfire Gauntlet. Very very greedy pick. Um, it's not at all what you're wanting out of a poppy support, although it is pretty freaking funny that you just basically sold that player. Uh, yeah. When, when you're talking about itemization, I know it's fun to go these more greedy builds, but, like, at, I, you're obviously wanting to climb. You, you know, you paid for a coaching session. Um, you need to be thinking about, like, what is going to win you m a, a higher percentage of your games. If you play a thousand games of Frostfire Poppy Gauntlet versus a thousand games of Locket poppy support which one is going to have a higher win rate and even if it's just like one or two percent it's still better to go with that more consistent choice because if you think about it it really it's just a difference of one percent of your games that depends if you climb or not if you're at 50 percent win rate you'll be there for the rest of your life right but if you're at 51 percent win rate you're still climbing so it's just about consistency and, and that's the exact reason that the ladder works is just, you know, yeah, you're going to get free losses because your team sucks. Yeah, you're going to get free wins because no matter how you played, uh, you know, your team was good. But over a long period of time, you are the only consistent um, uh, player on your team, right? I got totally off topic. I think we just had another Fiesta fight mid. Jeez. All right, we have three dragons. All we have to do is secure this last dragon. Should be free. Doing the scuttle crab is really not what you should be doing right now. You should be 100% uh, hovering mid with the rest of your team, getting vision uh, deep, deeper vision, better vision than just a blue ward, which is clearable. You know, using this, taking away their blast cone. Once again, a completely worthless ward. The fact that this is not a control ward... Uh, is, is it means it's a it's a worthless ward, man. Like what like what what is this? You you guys basically already have control of the pit. Why do you need to see the pit? You need to control the pit. Also, you're not buying nearly enough control wards, buddy. Every single back you go, uh, unless it's delaying one of your items, you definitely should be picking up a control ward. So let's see how you get into this. Re remember way back at the beginning of the. Uh, the coaching session when I was talking about like oh the worst case scenario is like a bunch of people could be you know hovering around this bush sometimes the worst case scenario does actually happen so we didn't know Alistar was here until we went on Kale because we didn't think about the worst case scenario right so luckily you've got your gangplank here and you guys are just ahead so you get out and that's not a straight int but a lot of the times like you going in on someone and not realizing that their support is behind them that's going to be an int All right, so like th these are good words. Like pop, pop a ward there, pop a ward there. Like I, I don't understand. You're you're doing good words, but then you're also doing like completely worthless words. Get into that habit of thinking about why you are warding in areas, because I think you're just doing some good and some bad without even realizing why the good ones are good and why the bad ones are bad. All right, yo, where are we going, buddy? Where where are we going, homie? Where are we pathing to? Look where the action's at. Look where everyone else is pathing to. Why are we going to Baron? Why are you and Kane going to Baron? You guys are going to duo Baron? I, I feel like this is fundamentally wrong and ex like it's probably going to be a good result. You guys probably get the Baron because they can't contest it. But like, oh, this is so hard to coach because, J okay, Jinx is once again split pushing. What is this team? This is so weird. I, I guess she takes out Kaisa. Okay. Okay. 
I, I guess that's a good call. It's a good call. I take it back. It seems really, really weird because it seems like the fight was going to be like shifting upwards, but it's just such a weird fight that shouldn't be taking place at all. But yeah, uh, I mean, look what happened to you guys' health bar. You guys can't actually duo the Baron, so it feels really weird to be going there instead of like going to your team as Poppy Kane. But we got Yorick coming in. We had to pull off it a little bit. You guys will eventually get it, I think. Yeah, there you go. It's weird. That, I mean, that's that's a weird call. That's a weird call. Once again, we didn't have a control ward to uh, deny the vision there either. All right. Well, we have literally one objective left to take when we've got Baron, so the rest of this game is probably going to play out. Um, I think that uh, you're, you're a really interesting case, aka Amazing. I think that you are quite comfortable on the champion Poppy. I think that you uh, recognize when you can kill people um, and how to kill them. I don't think you really understand vision very well, and I think that you are fundamentally misunderstanding the laning phase on a tank v tank matchup. So just really, really work on those concepts such as standing between the enemy and what the enemy wants, uh, consciously thinking about why you're warding certain things, Consider switching up your champion pool maybe a little bit because uh, I know playing Poppy, this happened to be a pretty good game for her, but I know that like blind picking Poppy or playing Poppy into like non Alistar champions is not super hot. Um, so, you know, maybe consider picking up a champion like Leona. I think she's going to play exactly how you want to play her. Definitely swap over to Locket. Uh, swap out your secondary runes. We went over a lot of stuff. And uh, th 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 this, this felt like a weird coaching session because... You made a lot of bad calls that turned out to be really good calls. But I want you to understand why they are bad calls. And um, so you don't keep doing them assuming that they're good just because you had a good result. Uh, but yeah. AKA Amazing, if you have any questions at all uh, about anything that I've covered here, definitely reach out. You know where to You know where to find me. Discord, Twitter. Only fan, like, you know, whatever, whatever platform you want to message me on, absolutely do so. And if anybody watches this on YouTube has any questions, pop them down in the comments and I will be uh, responding to as many of them as I can. But I hope this was educational for you guys and I hope it helps you guys climb a support. So take it easy, boys. Peace. Uh.